Hey, welcome to another Coffee with Catapult talk with uh, our CEO and founder, Brad Mishlove. Brad, how you doing today? I'm, uh, I'm doing well, Daryl. Thanks uh, for the conversation this morning. I am uh, drinking coffee, although uh, I think it's my fourth uh, cup and it's almost <laughs> drained. So, um, Taking it a little bit far, aren't you, Brad? <laughs> um, no, this is standard, uh, standard operating uh, protocol. Um, so... There you four, go. So COVID four, or no four COVID, cups. standard operating procedure for you. That's right. That's right. Well, today we today we got another interesting chat just to continue moving entrepreneurs along in this uh, current environment. Uh, you and I were talking offline before we started the recording uh, about uh, this idea of resilience, and you've got some interesting thoughts that we're going to dive into today. But uh, why don't you kick us off with um, that comment you made with me about uh, counting entrepreneurs out? Uh, well, first, I don't think you should ever count an entrepreneur out because uh, generally they will find a way. Uh, there's always a way. So uh, being tenacious and uh, never giving up, I think, is uh, kind of in the, uh, the uh, DNA of, uh, of an entrepreneur. It's, uh, it's there. But uh, the news uh, today, if you look at it long enough, none, none of it's very good. Um, and uh, it's easy to get caught up in it and uh, be discouraged. And uh, I'm hopeful today we can have a conversation on perhaps how that may not be fruitful. Uh, and uh, it's probably not great business strategy. So right. uh, I think we should focus on some other things that uh, might produce better results. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. The news is certainly, uh, I mean, you can find enough bad. I, I go find the good news on purpose and I have to work at it. So I know exactly what you mean, but, but you, we look around, we look around the world and outside of the, the big major corporations, the, the world is really counting on entrepreneurs right now. Well, it, uh, it always has, right? It's, uh, it is yeah. the employment base. It is the source of innovation. Uh, it is uh, what moves us. Uh, and yet uh, many uh, of the smaller businesses are uh, they're having a hard time right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, that, that is a true statement. Yeah. I think that's fact. Yeah, uh, so. And some of the larger corporations, uh, yeah, they're not. Uh, if uh, you're Amazon uh, today, you're probably feeling pretty good. But Amazon was a small company not too long ago. That's right. So, As a matter of um, fact, didn't even make a profit until not too long ago. That, that, is, that is correct. <laughs> so uh, now, now that I think their profit's so large, it's hard to count. It's, so. it's, it's going up by the minute so hard, yeah. But, uh, right. but that's, a good, that's a good segue into what we want to talk about, right? How do we... What are, we, what are we saying to the smaller uh, entrepreneur out there? There's the small and mid-sized firm that is really still navigating these uncertain waters right now. What do you got for them? Well, I, I, I think I have a lot of things. I, 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 and of course, it varies by, by individual and individual circumstance. But, uh, you know, the, in Las Vegas, where you and I are both at, uh, unemployment, I think I saw 26.7%. Uh, that's uh, way more than the national statistics, obviously not good. Um, yet, uh, we also see uh, housing uh, prices are increasing still. So it, it's, it's a very uh, unbalanced uh, kind of formulaic. Um, the, the news, yeah, it's bad. Uh, this, uh, this virus is a significant uh, issue. And I think uh, the first thing you have to uh, put in your head is, is that it will get better. Uh, it may get worse before it gets better. We don't, we don't really know. Um, I have no idea, but it will get better. I, I think we can, we can rest assured that at some point here, hopefully next year, it's going to get better. Right. Uh, in the meantime, what do you do? Right. Um, it's not going to go back to how it was. Uh, the, the market environment will probably be forever changed in some way, some probably bad, some in ways uh, maybe, maybe it's good. Um, but it's never going to go back. And so you have to look at your business uh, and, and look at it carefully as to where, where does your revenue streams come from? Uh, and where can you get revenue, both in the short run? And what's the likelihood of your business uh, experiencing uh, kind of pre-COVID revenue uh, sources and volumes uh, uh, going forward uh, once there's uh, some normalcy in the marketplace? And um, we don't know. Uh, we, we just don't know. Uh, today it was announced uh, that uh, the Russians uh, have uh, launched their vaccine. Um, 
we don't really know what that's going to look like. Uh, hopefully it's, uh, it's effective there and maybe we'll see similar results uh, here in a few months uh, in the U.S. Hmm. Um, but we can't bank on that because we don't really know. So I suggest focusing on what you do know. And that involves a number of things. Um, one is, what can you do? Let's not focus on what you can't do. So if you can only operate at 50% capacity inside your restaurant, what could you do outside of your restaurant? Can you do catering? Can you uh, sit outside? Can you do more delivery? Uh, should you use a delivery service? Can you do it in-house? Whatever it happens to be, should you start um, an online-only uh, restaurant, which is where your kitchen, uh, maybe the same kitchen you're using in your current brand, uh, comes out with a, a different uh, line and perhaps a whole different branding, and you have now two restaurants performing out of the same kitchen, one with its brick-and-mortar and delivery presence, and one with its com only online presence. Uh, it's an interesting concept. I'm not sure uh, would have been thought of in pre-environment because you didn't have to necessarily. Right. Uh, now we know the restaurant business is challenging even in in good times. It's uh, generally location specific and um, excuse the pun, but uh, subject to the flavor of the day. Um, but there's always a way. There's got to be a way. And I think you have to look at your business and look at it sort of like like a freeway right you got traffic lanes right some lanes that the traffic is slow and some maybe are moving a little faster and you got to pick a lane where you can get some traction and go and go forward and i suggest yeah. you actually do that so um sales activity um if you have a sales force etc uh, I'm sure you've heard every excuse of why they can't sell uh, today. I'm sure you've heard a similar, Daryl. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm in it. <laughs> and um, I, I, I don't like that. I, I think uh, taking no for an answer uh, is, is just not acceptable, particularly in this environment. So yeah. it's like, I understand the offices aren't open. Okay, people are working from home. Okay, so right. what can you do? How can right. you get attention? Right. Uh, what right. can you do via video and the telephone and yeah. through the mail? And um, it's probably a lot more than you're currently doing. Yeah. My so current I think buyers aren't, my current buyers aren't buying high. anymore. Okay. <laughs> right. And just because your current customers are saying, hey, look, we're deferring that project today, doesn't mean that that's going to be the case tomorrow. Um you know, we have, uh, and I don't know what the future will hold here, but we have a very large project that looks like it's on hold uh, here in the Las Vegas market. It's the new uh, Madison Square Garden Sphere. Mm. Uh, it's supposed to be an interesting entertainment uh, venue. Uh, a lot of money has already gone into the ground in construction. And it appears, uh, although I don't know for sure, that it's been paused. Um, and if you were a vendor or... Uh, you know, a contractor of some sort uh, that was relying on that, that project, it may be delayed. But to say that a company of that size, and I believe they're a publicly traded company, uh, is going to forever abandon that project, I, I don't know if that's realistic or not. Um, now, do they need to open it today? No, even if they opened it today, they couldn't put any people in it. Right. But, you know, maybe next year or the year after they will. So they've got, I don't know, another billion dollars to spend over there. And it's likely at some point going to happen unless they completely walk away from their investment. Another project here, um, and we can see the remnants of it, I think from the last uh, time we had some economic woes, there was, a, I don't know, for lack of a better term, a Ferris wheel kind of project over near the, uh, the airport. And you can see the concrete um, work with the, uh, the the rebar sticking out of it that was abandoned. Well, somebody just bought that parcel. I don't think they bought that parcel with the intention to look at the eyesore. Um, right. Just a guess, but I think something's going to happen there. Um, so, you know, we read in the, in the paper, it's decimated here, you know, tourism's down, uh, yet uh, the... Uh, uh, the Boring Company now has, uh, I guess, uh, entered into some uh, forward-looking uh, arrangement with uh, the new Resorts World Casino that they're going to run a, a tunnel and some type of people-moving system 
from that resort to the convention center. And you may ask why there's no conventions going, but there will be. Right. So uh, this idea, uh, Daryl, that everybody's going to work from home uh, forever now, that we don't need our offices, I think uh, we're going to see that there are some failings in that philosophy. Um, that it works and you can continue business. And in some cases, you can grow business. And some businesses, perhaps, that were founded in that premise and et cetera, are working well. Uh, but it is more difficult working in this remote environment. I don't know if you're experiencing that. But I do believe that um, the collaboration is a little bit more complicated. Certainly, recruiting and onboarding of new people mm -hmm. is more complicated. I would believe training is more difficult and complicated. And I think you will see that maybe the office environment's gonna look different. Maybe we're gonna go to have smaller office spaces and a little more flex, but the need for people to gather mm -hmm. uh, and gather in person, I don't believe, and I'm sure there are many experts that will have a difference of opinion. I don't believe that that, that need to meet in person is going away. Yeah, we're, we're human beings. We were. We, we've come this far through collaboration. It can't all be solved through remote, as you've mentioned. Brett, I want to highlight before we're done with this talk today that you're not just talking from uh, a theoretical standpoint. You yourself have grown several businesses. Your partners in your firm have grown businesses. You've been now advising companies since the last recession, uh, through the last recession, to have now uh, seen those companies grow at levels that, of course, we won't state exact numbers here, but... Brad, your advice has been key to dozens of companies now over the last decade from pre uh, the last 2008 collapse, if you will. Um, so I want to make sure we don't leave that out of this conversation. For those watching this uh, conversation today, uh, don't take Brad's very calm, very matter of fact. This is a wise, wise gentleman who knows how to help companies pivot through the toughest of challenges with or without a pandemic. So I want to make sure that that gets stated here. Uh, you're going to want to connect with Brad a little further at catapultgroups.com, catapultgroups.com. I just want to get that in there for you, Brad, because you're so gifted at your insight into how businesses can find that new lane or stay in the lane and see things they didn't see because of the stress or because of the news or because of as we would say, being inside the picture, they can't see, you know, they, they can't see themselves because they're inside the picture frame themselves. And you've got an, uh, a unique gift across all of those landscapes around uh, the financial side, the legal side, the growth side, the operations side, the team building side. And you just bring a wealth of information and insight, not only through the growth of your businesses, but through those of your colleagues. And I just want to make sure that that gets stated before this episode is over. Um, that you're an invaluable resource to companies like mine and the other dozens that you, uh, you and your team work with throughout e each and every calendar month. So I want to make sure we get that. Well, that's, that's super kind. I'm a bit uh, humbled uh, by, your, by your comments. I was almost looking, but I wouldn't know where to look because I'm in my home office for a pin to just poke that, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that bubble that you just uh, produced there. So, um, you know, and, you know and, it's, uh, it's, uh, I, it's easy from the outside, Daryl. You know, it, it's when you're not in it, um, it's it's much easier to spot the blind spots. Right. And when Would you're you... when you're looking at uh, something from uh, thirty thousand foot uh, view versus uh, in the driver's seat, uh, you see the track a little differently. Right. Um, you, you just do. And so, um, you know, when you have blind spots and you're missing those those opportunities, or you get stuck in uh, you know what's not working. Uh, somebody like myself from the outside, um, sometimes we look at this and we're like, well, you know, go left here. What do you, what do you, you know, or go right or, you know, keep the course or whatever it happens to be. But it, it's, it becomes um, uh, more obvious uh, from, from, a, from an outside perspective because you're not involved in the day to day. And I think yeah. that's, that's a very good point. Uh, there, there is a way. Um, there is a way through. And uh, I think uh, you just have to have confidence that uh, the market conditions will improve and uh, they will. And you can see that in certain businesses and how they operate. Um, and just look at a few of our um, 
uh, hotel casino properties here in Las Vegas, uh, some of the larger uh, ones, but not the necessarily the um, the the ones that are more corporate, the ones that are more kind of locally controlled that have such a, a, a long-term view of business. They're, they're taking care of their employees. They're having a long run uh, view. They're sacrificing short-term earnings for long-term viability. And I think those are good practices to implement in your business. Now, obviously capital's key and making sure you have enough cash uh, to make it through to when the times uh, improve is important but making sure that you have that critical core infrastructure, which in most businesses is people, right? It's people, um, you know, equipment, plant and equipment, that's the easy part. People uh, is uh, more complicated and right. <laughs> um, also uh, in many ways more important. So right. we got to focus on the people. Uh, we got to focus on what we can do and, and the solutions are there. Um, they, they are there and uh you know part of uh our uh membership uh group at uh, catapult or some some businesses that are just doing uh really outstanding in this environment uh, in spite of the environment because of the environment uh and really because of the foundations that they've laid uh over the last several years their investments in sales their investments in people um their investments in good marketing um efforts and those are those are paying off uh, today. They were paying off uh, pre-pandemic, and they're going to pay off uh, definitely in, in a uh, hopefully what we see very soon post-pandemic world. Absolutely. So, so I appreciate the the chat uh, today, Daryl. Um, any here. anything else that we should uh, try to accomplish uh, this afternoon? Always insightful. Always insightful. No, I think we've got this one covered. Brad Mislove, thanks again for taking some time. Uh, for joining us, uh, those of you listening, get over to catapultgroups.com. If you're in, uh, you may not even think you're in need, um, but entrepreneurship can be a lonely journey, especially when things are in challenging times. We look like superheroes when everything's going right, uh, but you need someone like Brad in your corner. You need someone, he can either validate what your idea is so you feel confident about it, which he's talking about, be confident that things are going to turn around. And in other times, you might need to pivot. And he's got insight from not just his own experience, but from uh, his partner's experience and, and his dozens and dozens of companies that they've advised uh, over the last decade or, or more, in fact. Um, so, Brad, I think we've got that done for today. Thanks for taking some time with us, and uh, we'll see you next time. Appreciate it. Thanks, Daryl.